This episode is brought to you by That Gosh Darn Hippie Show. Featuring music from the days of vinyl, it's the grooviest thing to hear on your radio. <sighs> Once again, thanks to Patreon, I am reminded that when it comes to devising indescribable torment, the forces of darkness have nothing on you mortals. I no longer fear hell. Well, I never exactly feared hell. I mean, it's not a great place to live, obviously, but fear is too strong a word for it. It's more of a constant low-level anxiety, and look, the point is, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells stinks, all right? Sponsored by Pizza Hut to capitalize on the height of Turtle Mania, this touring production was filmed live at Radio City Music Hall and originally broadcast via pay-per-view. It was kind of like Amazon Prime, but mostly featuring boxing matches and adult movies. A tie-in album and VHS were also released, ensuring that parents would be tormented by this piece of raw sewage for uncountable hours. I sympathize. I really do. But there's no point in stalling it. Let's examine the case of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells. The titles come with a lot of shots of stagehands and sound equipment, because that's what the kids have come to see, right? Either that, or they're really overselling the rock concert aspect of this whole enterprise. Finally, the Turtle Quartet takes the stage, having traded their ninja weapons for musical instruments and pseudo-John Cougar Mellencamp songs. Hear the rhythm and you're moving your feet. Ain't nothing like a song. I know it can't be easy moving in those costumes, but come on, the guy playing Raphael isn't even trying to match the beat of the drum kit. After that's over, we get a little backstory as to what prompted the Turtles to go into this whole music thing. Besides corporate merchandising, I mean. Yo! And you know that this music stuff is new to us, <laughs> but it is fully cool! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome! And yes, the totally radicalisms are part and parcel of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially at this stage in the franchise, but it really, really has not aged well. Maybe it's the specific writing in this instance, maybe it's just the whole franchise tie-in aspect of the whole thing, but it feels even more how-do-you-do, fellow kids, than usual. Basically, this whole thing was Master Splinter's idea, because he's determined that music is a more effective force for good than weapons. So Donatello, the tech head of the team, invented up a bunch of self-playing instruments, the turtles blinged up their usual costumes, and here we are. to believe that after hearing this, Splinter is thinking, you know what, go back to the weapons thing, that was working out well for you. Next up, an ode to the turtles' favorite food, as well as their corporate overlords, and sin number two, pizza power. Let us sleep in a carrot, maybe you'll see from the parrot, believe me when I tell you the word gone made us don't exist. I'd say this is about what you would expect from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles song about pizza, but... Nah, it's worse. Between the lyrics and the dancing delivery boys, this is making Pokemon Live look like Les Miserables. But hey, some kids got some foam pizza frisbees out of the whole mess, so that's something. But now we're going to bring it down a bit and present you with the smooth song stylings of... Master Splinter? Have you ever skipped rocks on the water? Skip them when the water is flat and calm and watch the rings grow around the place where the stone touched the water. Each of you is like that stone. Oh, great, Splinter's giving a motivational speech. This is sin number three, skipping stones, which is your usual, small things have big results, we are all ripples in a pond pseudo-philosophy. But hey, what do you expect from a giant rat? Smooth and flat inside my hand I just wanna ride it Well, certainly not that. Between this and Garrett and Quest for Camelot, I think we need to start an I inexplicably sound like a Brian Adams clone when I sing support group. And can we leave off getting all arty music video with the visuals? This is a kiddie concert featuring giant ninjutsu reptiles named after Renaissance painters. Nobody's going to this for anything high concept. 
Also, the whole violence is not the answer, music is the path to enlightenment message is a bit incongruous for a franchise based on beating things up. I feel like this whole song was just a sop to the think of the children crowd. But hey, what's a Ninja Turtle story without the bad guys? No sooner than that song is over than the heroes get freeze raid or something by the evil Shredder and his mad scientist in residence, Baxter Stockman. Shredder, whose eyebrows are on fleek, immediately breaks the cardinal rule of the evil overlord list by ranting and gloating to the audience. When I unleash the weapon Krang brought to me from Dimension X, the world will lay at my feet. No one will be spared. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. So the Shredder has this thing called the, let me check my notes here, the Deharmonic Convergence Converter. Look, I'm not going to bother to remember that, and I don't expect you to. We'll just call it the anti-music thing. The anti-music thing will suck all the music out of the world, thereby removing all joy and hope and leaving it ripe for taking over. Oh, and it will also harm the turtles somehow, because I've spent enough time explaining this, so let's move on. The unfrozen turtles shake off the momentary weirdness, along with the kids warning Panto style that the Shredder was just there. Even the testimony of official gal pal April O'Neil isn't enough to convince them. Shredder's here now at the theater, and he's got a machine that will suck all the music whoa, whoa, out of the whoa, world whoa. or something. Wait, I know that voice. That's Sherry Renee Scott. And I thought Andrew Rannells had it bad. After a bit of Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Shredder, we get right back to the concert with a little Be Yourself, Don't Give In to Peer Pressure PSA. Yikes, conversion therapy is even worse than I imagined. And as if that wasn't bad enough, for no reason we're getting some surf rock. Hanging in the city, living underground. Looking for waves that can't be found Too bad The serpent subterranean with two men Okay, so it is on brand in the sense that they're singing about surfing through the sewers, which is a thing that they did sometimes, I guess? I suppose I can go with that, but this really puts it into the sin count. Hey! Once you get cracking, man, you're totally rad You're digging the sea, you're getting it me Jump in ways that you never had Blow your mind The best you'll find yeah! It's the coconut bras That's the part that really Sears into your brain Oh, and there's also a rap break You've got your badge, you've got your deck Your mama's scared that you'll break your neck You've got it wide, you're in control You ride the bowl, you're a tubing mole Next, we Okay, I know this one, I know this one um, okay, I guess they're... Wait till you hear this one. Or rather, April is... Man, you got to think the groove is sound. Listen to the tracks we're laying down. Okay, look, I get that this is more of a concert than a book musical, but this is a bit of a mess. The first half kind of wedges the plot awkwardly in between the songs, and then the second half wedges the songs awkwardly in between the plot. Not to mention that the turtle's main contribution to the plot in the first half is let's completely ignore the weird goings-on disrupting our concert, which doesn't make them look good. Honestly, it's like they're deliberately avoiding what these characters do best, beating up bad guys, to focus on what they do mediocrely, which is sing and dance. I never liked rap music! Oh, thank Lucifer, the villains are back. After what I've sat through, I'm getting pretty sympathetic to this whole destroying the turtles and their music thing. Anyway, Shredder's Foot Clan is putting the finishing touches on the anti-music thing, which will be activated when the turtles start their next song. So we won't have to hear the next song, which is a plus. And sure enough, as soon as they start back in again, everything goes all shaky and feedbacky. Brothers, stick together! We have unexpected guests! The Foot Clan attacks, April turns up long enough to get Damsel in distress, and Shredder's giant air conditioner does indeed make the turtles all woozy. So the turtles beat a retreat, leaving Shredder to gloat to the audience and the captive April, and leading us to... Except not really. See, because this was a pay-per-view thing, they had to have something going on during intermission, and what goes on is sin number six. There's this reporter, Kip, 
and as near as I can tell, his appearance in Ninja Turtle canon is limited to this one show, comes on to do man-on-the-street stuff with some audience members in the lobby before he goes snooping about backstage in comical coward fashion. I, uh, this is not, this is not my... See, I don't... I shouldn't be here! I agree. Who told you that you added anything to this show, such as it is? He also gets a bit of interview time with the Turtles, who are licking their wounds but working on a plan to save the world, which apparently revolves around Donatello making some kind of... Anti, anti-music thing, I guess. Well, what are you gonna do? Dude, grasp the concept. We can't stand in front of it because it makes us weak. Totally, it's like kryptonite. Well, can you get up behind it? Sure, if you want to do it the easy way. For his own part, Kip keeps whining at the turtles to stop Shredder and save everyone. Basically, most of his part in this whole enterprise amounts to this. Do something! Do something! Do something! Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, Shredder has taken over the theater, he has April and what I guess are supposed to be a couple of stagehands held hostage, and he's relishing the audience booze like the melodrama villain he so desperately wants to be. Oh, it hurts so good. Good night, everybody. Now we come to a section I like to call Shredder Roasts the Audience, or Sin Number 7 for short. As you might imagine, it mostly involves Shredder insulting various kids in ways that range from the tepid to the somewhat uncomfortable. Is that your sister? Friend? Huh? Cousin! Cousin? What's the matter? I couldn't get a date? There's also a demonstration of Shredder destroying some music, which is basically just an excuse to pull out the confetti cannons, and an entire song about how Shredder hates music. And no, this show isn't nearly clever enough for that to be deliberately ironic. Say the music is good for your soul! I don't know! It's not my goal! I destroy music every day! You're listening to the words I say! Although nobody who performs lyrics like that can be said to genuinely love music... April throws in some boilerplate, You're evil and bad and will never get away with this! And the turtles appear via video feed to reassure her that they're coming to the rescue. Honestly, it was much cooler when the doctor did it. And by the way, would it have been so much trouble for the costumes on the recorded footage to at least vaguely look like the ones they're wearing on stage? The bad guys go off to hunt for the turtles, leaving April alone so she can have a solo. They taught me a song once, a song, a song that helps you not to be so afraid anymore. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect. What follows is sin number nine, April's song. Sherry Renee Scott sounds fantastic, of course, but this song basically amounts to, I'm just going to hang around and wait for the male protagonists to save me. Yeah, like most sole female characters in 80s cartoon shows aimed at boys, April kind of got a raw deal, but even so, she did have a more proactive role than this. Shredder is furious that April was doing a power ballad and Little Mermaid's her voice away, guess she knows how it feels now, and goes back to turtle hunting. Fortunately, our heroes are currently concealed from the baddies' search efforts by a plot, a uh, cloaking device. How did you make these so fast? I just rearranged the magnetic molecular structure of that little strip on the back of our American Express card. Don't leave home without it! Nothing the kids love more than a good American Express joke. Anyway, Splinter has concluded that the anti-music thing basically runs on bad mojo, and faith and positivity or whatever it is we're trying to sell can defeat it. Problem is, the cloaking device works both ways, so the turtles can't good mojo the thing away without putting themselves at risk. They're not so hot on this, but Michelangelo, whose mouth mechanism seems to be on the fritz for the moment, encourages his brothers, teammates, whatever, with a little Follow Your Heart song. I said it's time to keep believing in what you've always known. Splinter turns to the tried-and-true method of audience participation to help the turtles out, hey, it worked for Tinkerbell, and starts off a little sing-along. Shredder overhears and storms on stage, and he and the Foot Clan are defeated with some fight choreography. And terrible jokes. Tell me the truth, Shredder. 
So many. You're my father. Well, how's this for the force? Terrible. Now this is what I call a power too. Jokes. Finally, Shredder is sucked into the video monitor with a bit of I'll get you next time, Gadget Turtles. All the music in the world is restored, which means we get a victorious finale song. You gotta fight to be free. You gotta fight for what is right. You gotta fight to be free. But we need your help tonight. I pity the parents who are forced to sit through Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells at the urging of their children. I pity a lot of the kids, who are probably looking back on this with embarrassment by now. The only people I don't pity are the producers, who threw together this mess of forgettable music, half-assed moralizing, and terrible, terrible attempts to be relatable for the sole purpose of selling more merchandise and pizza. So the court of musical hell thinks it fitting that they be punished by having all the music removed from their lives. Except this. So let it be recorded. This session of the Infernal Court in Musical Hell is now adjourned. <laughs>